This is Africa's first accelerator mass spectrometry facility as part of the Itemba Laboratory for Accelerator-Based Sciences in Johannesburg. Opened earlier this month, it will be used to train scientists and students from a variety of disciplines and is seen as a great step towards a knowledge-based economy. And here to tell us more is Simon Mullins, head of the Itemba Labs in Johannesburg. Simon, welcome. Thank you very much. Now for the layman, for our average viewer watching this who does not have a science degree, what is accelerator mass spectrometer and what is the role of this facility? Okay, as the name would suggest, it has an accelerator and we use it for mass spectrometry. So what does mass spectrometry mean? It means that we're able to determine the mass of a particular uh, nucleus that we accelerate through the accelerator and then measure its uh, abundance relative to a stable reference. So the most common usage is carbon-14 uh, for radiocarbon dating. Um, so for example, if we get a sample which contains carbon, we can make a sample of that uh, substance, we can put it into the iron source where the beam is made, inject that beam into the accelerator, and then after acceleration we analyse what comes out and then detect in a detector system. What we are able to do is then determine the ratio of the carbon-14 radioactive nucleus to the stable reference are the carbon, commonly carbon-13. And that in principle tells us how long ago that that substance died. It was living matter at that time when it, di when it died. And that's carbon dating, but there are so many more potential things yes. that this could do. What are some of the, the avenues you can go with a system like well, this? Well, one very important one is climate change, which is obviously on everybody's it's mind. It's the big buzzword. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, for example, we, we are intending also to uh, look at beryllium-10 dating. Beryllium-10 has a, has a half-life of about 1.5 million years. We can extract this beryllium-10 from, from ice cores in the Antarctic, so we're in uh, collaboration with the South African Antarctic Expedition. They will pull out these ice cores. We will then be able to anal analyze those samples, determine the beryllium-10 content in those samples, and in principle give us an idea about climate history. And then that should give us a better idea of what actually be has been going on with the climate. Now this whole system and facility has been a long process in the making. There's lots of parties. How did this come together and where does Itemba originate from? Well, it originated when in 2004, the uh, Itemba Laboratory for Accelerator-Based Sciences in the Cape, where the big psychotron is, took over this facility which was formerly the Shonlan Research Institute of Wits University. As part of that process, the government department, the DST, put in 16 million rands to refurbish the accelerator with the idea that this, this would become Africa's first AMS facility. Subsequent to that, we had to obtain funding for the other components, namely where the beam is generated and injected, and also after the accelerator where it's analyzed. We had to apply to the IAEA for money and also to our own research foundation. We obtained enough money initially to get the system which, which generates the beam and injects it, but then we still did not have the system which goes after the accelerator. That only came about two years ago in terms of funding, but was only delivered at the end of February of this year. That has just been installed. We are now commissioning the complete system, as you see with my colleagues here. We are now, we had carbon-14 through to the final detector. We showed this to the Minister of Science and Technology on Monday, and uh, she was extremely impressed, and we were extremely happy to have got to this stage. Now we have to have a make sure that our system, we can do quantitative measurements with the system, and that's what we're doing at the moment with our, with our expert visitors at this particular time. We're actually measuring or determining that the ratio of carbon-13 to carbon-12, the stable isotopes, we know what that ratio should be, so we can determine how good our system is by actually measuring this at this time. Then we have, we have benchmarked our, our system before we're going on to the carbon-14 measurements. Now the project has a lot of experts like yourselves, but it's also about training the next generation of research and developers. Um, South Africa is moving towards a knowledge-based economy, the yeah. Department of Science and Technology is focusing on this. But we have a big issue in the country in terms of skills. If you look at nationally at the, the projections, we're some of the worst performance in science and technology in the world. How do we get that right to ultimately train the next generation right. of scientists? I mean, if, if you're going to be you know, world competitive in your science skills, you, may, you need world-class infrastructure, and this is of that nature. So with this in place, the, the opportunities for skills generation across a wide range of disciplines within South Africa, within the higher education sector, it's, it's here and the support that we had to get in order to, to be able to get the funding, most, a lot of that came from universities within South Africa. So, for example, on WITS campus, the support from WITS was very strong and other universities, so they now have a facility here to which they can come to bring their samples, to actually have them analysed, and it's a, 
a, a mechanism whereby not only will we do in the science, but it goes hand in hand with the postgraduate training at MSc and PhD level. Well, it's good to know, Simon. Thank you very much.